Hello friends, in this session we'll be taking a look at the governance process. There are two types of governance processes, one for snapshot installation and one for snapshot creation. So if you have looked at uh, process centers, you might have seen application with a hammer sign next to its icon. That indicates a governance process. So let's see how a governance process is built and how it's executed and how it works. So what we are looking at is the generic installation requested governance process which is triggered whenever an installation for a snapshot is requested and that process is attached as the governance process. So uh, in a expanded form, a governance process may have ha different kind of handlings for production environment, test, staging and development environment. But let's take a look at the simplest form, how to create a governance process, how to attach it to a snapshot, how to activate it and how it works. A governance process needs to be created in a process application, not in a toolkit. And in the process application, you need to attach the system governance toolkit. So we are attaching the system governance toolkit. Once you do that and try to create a process, you will have the option to select a governance template. So this is required to make a certain process a governance process. There are two types of templates available, installation requested and snapshot, snapshot status change template. So we'll go with the installation requested template. So now this process is created and it has a task in it which will be invoked once the snapshot deployment happens and it will be assigned to the assigned users. Coming back to the workflow center, we'll need to create a, as you can see the hammer sign is still next, uh, not next to it. There are certain steps which need to be performed to activate it as a governance process. You create a snapshot for it. And then you need to change the status of the snapshot. The status should be set to released, then only it will be activated as a governance process. Now if we come back to our workflow center or the process center, you can see that the hammer sign is next to it and it is now activated as a governance process. Now let's take a look how is it applied to a certain process application. Let's pick up this application. And if you click on it, you will see a governance tab. When you go to governance, the default processes are attached to it, but you can attach your custom governance process which you just created. So we'll be changing the governance process to my governance process. Once this is done and you try to deploy the application, the governance process will get kicked off. Let's create a new snapshot and try to deploy it. If you look at the status, you'll see that running the governance process, my governance process. So the deployment halts in between and the governance process is executed so that let's say QA approvers, managers can up, take a look at the installation and approve it or take necessary steps for it or maybe send out notifications. So those kind of acti activities can be placed in the governance process. So let's go, go to the process portal and see what the governance process has created.
so the task which is in the the governance process is available or assigned to the user to take action on the installation request and they can open the task claim it and just complete the task obviously you'll be putting in more details about the installation details as well as any other actions which the user can perform in the simplest form it has a postpone and a done we'll do done and if we go back to our process center and take a look at the installation status So the governance process was just a template and it did not have the installation activity in it. So you need to put in the installation activity within the governance process. Then only the entire governance action and the deployment will succeed. Thank you. So that's an overview of how to create a governance process, how it works and how to activate it.